Well, certainly uh, it is my honor to uh, present Dominic with a, with a proclamation from the Board of Selectmen. Uh, as he said, John is here and Fran is out of the country right now, but he certainly would be here. For this, uh, I believe, a very, very important occasion when we can recognize somebody for the accomplishments and the contributions they've done to the town of Grant. You know, I've, uh, I've uh, had the honor of working with Dominic on uh, several different levels, uh, you know, but every one of these levels that I worked with Dominic on, every single one, and I can say this without reservation, Dominic was a perfect gentleman, to every good. And I would say this to Dominic, I always found you to be a perfect gentleman, and I'm glad that I could call you a friend. And I would certainly like to uh, read this proclamation that was uh, directed by the Board of Selectmen. This is a proclamation that it's to dedicate to the Dominic A. Bonacourt Basketball Court, June 25th, 2011. Whereas Dominic Bonacourt has served on the Brampton Board of Recreation for the past seven years, three years as chairman, and whereas Mr. Bonacourt has served as a volunteer for over 50 years in numerous capacities at the Brampton Recreation Department, and whereas he has coached CYO basketball for six years, men's softball for five, and was an instrumental coach in the Brantford Little League, leading teams to five town titles. In addition, he coached the Brantford Recreation Department's Women's Softball League and coached one shoreline championship team. And whereas, Dominic has worked tirelessly over many years serving the residents of the town of Brantford as a state representative, first selectman, second selectman, third selectman, representative town meeting member, and numerous civic associations. Now therefore, we the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Brampton, in recognition of the vast contributions made by Mr. Bonacore, hereby proclaim Hammerfield Basketball Court to be known as the Dominic A. Bonacore Basketball Court this 25th day of June 2011. With his chuckle, he brought a sense of calm. A sense of calm to me when I needed it the most. And that sense of calm is what Dom brings to everyone he encounters. If you've ever felt small or unimportant, Dom is there listening. He makes you feel that your thoughts are important and that you are valuable. He never gives up on those he believes in and cares about. He is truly an amazing man and an exceptional human being. You know, we all have a few moments in time that we carry through our lives. They make us the people we become and set the stage for our future behavior. There are weddings, birth, divorce, death, defining moments in school. And the moment you realize you are valued and protected by another human being. I'd like to share a story that I've never told anybody, um, ever. Okay, Dom is the only person other than my mother who's made me feel valued and protected as only a parent can. It was the 90s and we were at the firehouse on election eve of course and a man came over to me and started to bother me. He was calling me names and he threatened to take me behind the firehouse and beat some sense into me because I was being a disrespectful little girl. Well, Tom's ears perked right up. And he came over very calmly. He smiled at me. He turned his back to me and stood between me and the man. You need to leave her alone or you'll be dealing with me. A man doesn't threaten a woman and you're no man. As the man left, Don turned, he put his arm around me and said, some people are just ignorant and it's better to ignore them. But if he comes near you, you again, come and get me and he'll deal with me. So I smiled and I excused myself. And as I walked to the ladies' room, 
I could feel the tears running down my cheeks because my thought was that this must be what it's like to have your dad stand up and protect you. And I've never felt that before, and I've never felt that since. So Dom, on behalf of Carol, your words cannot express our gratitude and love for you. Thank you for everything you've done for this town and for us. And most importantly, thank you for coming into and staying in our lives. We are blessed to call you our friend. We love you, Dom. Uh, anyways, just a quick story. Oh, you got the clock? Yeah. Okay. Behind you, Dom, I was reminiscing with uh, uh, his sons earlier uh, today, and it was really a special time the other night. Bill mentioned earlier to you that uh, Dom and I were on the basketball court where we spent many a times. Uh, how good was that? He was, our, uh, he was our first selectman at one time for two years, so every time on Tuesday and Thursday when it was lunchtime, I got to go play basketball with the first selectman, so it was pretty good stuff. But Dom had, had, was, had done that for years. And uh, Dom actually uh, pretty much, uh, we were talking about his sons, how he knows all the rules and the rule books. And basically, I just call him Dom's Rules, you know. So once again, um, it was just a special moment. It was just Dom and I out on the court. And, you know, he took his shirt off. I, I probably would have taken it off about a, a year ago or so, but then the, I started eating a few more cakes along the way <laughs> with Dom. And Dom uh, and I were, we always were watching our weight as we went along. And uh, it was kind of special. Dom was out there and I was reminiscing about being with his sons. I was friends with his son, sons earlier in my life. And uh, I used to go down, we used to race cars down in, down in his, uh, downstairs and we were talking about that. And. Um, Anyways, uh, I had some reminiscing that we played basketball and a lot of sports and baseball with his sons. And Don and I were out there, it was special. He was, uh, Don has one of the best two-handed uh, set shots you'll ever see. He has a great hook. Uh, he has an under, underhand shot that uh, just went by everybody. And uh, Don was playing in his 70s, strong, up and down the court. And uh, the, the smart thing that I did was um, I was one time when we used to play, I think I played against Dom. It wasn't a good idea because uh, Dom used to like contact, so if you came down low, as big as I am, I, I thought I would be able to get some position on. You never could get position with Dom. So after that one game, I always made sure I was on Dom's team all the time. <laughs> we won most of our games because he made all the rules up. It was great. <laughs> and he knew the score, so it was special. But just my last quick story, reminiscent about that time when we were shooting out there, was really special to me because um, I was almost like, I have a son that's 17 years old now, and I remember out there just shooting with him. And it was kind of special. I kind of felt like um, I'd been like a son to Dom for all these years. Even when Dom um, was a volunteer here and worked through the, those years, even before he came here, um, when Joe Trapasso, the previous director, had left, um, I have a great board, I still do, and I can rely on those people. Uh, but Dom came back and, and served on his board and served as chairman. And one thing I can say about Dom in all those years, going back into the 60s and the, and the crazy 70s, as we said, um, he really cared about the kids. And it wasn't just about um, uh, the uh, young kids, but I mean, as, as young as toddlers and also the teenagers, he really had a, a, a big thing for those kids uh, with all sports and stuff. I really got it. And, you know, I still, I try to explain to my students at Southern, I teach um, as an adjunct there the last eight years, I try to convince my board every day, I try to convince people every day on the work that we do here at the Rec Department. I'm passionate about it, as my staff is. We've tried to carry on the tradition in parks and recreation here. But I told the reporter last night, there's one thing that Dominic Boniker does understand more than anything. He gets it. There's not many people that get it, and it's not a disrespect to anybody. But he really understands what parks and recreation are and what it does to the quality of life for people for all ages. Not just for toddlers, six month old kids we have programs now, all the way to seniors. And he really understands how important it is, especially in these times that we're faced with now. So, um, and probably the most important thing, as much as he's been a great advocate to us and our whole department, and to myself too here, and, and making sure that we do the right thing, I can say one thing, he's really been a great and true friend, and uh, I, uh, I think this is long overdue. I thank Carol O'Brien and Bill O'Brien uh, for bringing it forward. You can ask Dom, I told the sons, you know, 
we should, I took Don for granted. I've taken Don for granted for so many years. And I wanted to keep myself uh, from that happen, but. Gee, I want to thank everyone for one being here, two my board members for making a recommendation and should be number one the board of selectmen who said go ahead and do it and they did it. They did a great job. We've got a, fortunately a, a wonderful board, a great staff that has kept this building as it was and 63 we first opened it up. It's one of the best town buildings we have, definitely. And it's because of the staff and the attitude that they're working for the people of Brantford. Let's keep it the best. Uh, <clears throat> how do you mention all the things I've done? I've done more. Uh, I guess my family's got to come to the top of the list. They put up with me for all these years. <clears throat> Excuse me as I disappeared for this event or that event. Uh, and there were a lot of events. Uh, for instance, we saved Beacon Hill and Brantford Hills. That was a big item. We campaigned, knocked on doors, raised money. We spent over $20,000. But the thing, the big thing about it was simply that we were nobodies and we were fighting millionaires and we came out on top because we stuck with it, got the facts, and presented them properly. Uh, I also ran the band concerts on the green, which are start next week, <coughs> uh, when I was second selectman. Uh, I served on the senior tax review committee. I, the thing I'm very proud of, and most of you are benefiting from that fact, is that I alone, because my other legislators at the time wouldn't join me, Southern New England Telephone Company wanted to make Brantford phone calls to New Haven, and from New Haven to Brantford, the toll call. Uh, I couldn't get the support of legislators, but I did start a petition, and had that petition going, not only in Brantford, East Haven, New Haven, uh, and I had hundreds, if not thousands, of signatures, and I brought them up to the commission, up to the commission in Hartford, and was able to stop SNET from going forward with their tolls on Brantford phone calls. So for the last 15 years, I saved you at least a quarter every time you go. <laughs> uh, and one of the things I did you probably don't like uh, as a legislator, as you drive down the streets, state highways with construction, you'll see these signs. Uh, told, fines are doubled if you speed through this area. Well. I was co-sponsor of that bill, and we got it through because that year we had a couple of our state workers get killed on the highway because people were driving through. So it was appropriate, and I stepped forward and co-sponsored the bill. It's a success. It's still out there. Uh, the other thing I did that I'm proud of is the children of policemen and firemen who die in the line of duty will get a free college education at the state universities. I felt that was deserving and again went forward with that one. Uh, the thing I'm most proud of as a freshman, as a state legislator, uh, there was a resolution, I supported a resolution against the desecration of our flag. And which was appalling, that resolution had died for three years before I got there. So I went out there and lobbied every legislator there was. And fortunately, I got it out of committee and got it onto the floor. Well, I didn't get it out on the floor. I got it forwarded to the floor. And it took three months to get it on the floor. And the only reason I was able to get it on the floor was because I made the request. And 
when I made the request to bring it out on the floor, I stopped everything for about two hours because they were going through the rules to try to rule me out of order for making that request, and unfortunately, they couldn't do it. Uh, but they tabled it. So I started my little show. I went out and put on my American Legion hat and wore it every day. I passed out American flags to each of the legislators, and nobody turned them down. Uh, and then I asked for a vote. We got the vote. We got the vote. We got to put the pressure in the right places. For, but for those people to not support our flag, it's a sin. There are too many people that died for that flag. And as I go around the American Legion and visit our veterans in the hospitals, uh, one of our parting gestures is to salute the veteran. And most of these people can't lift their arms, but they attempt to lift their arms and salute you on the way out. So with that heartfelt feeling for our flag, it was justified to take my action. Uh, oh yeah, this is a sport event. Sporting event. <laughs> I, I ran the, the summer playgrounds for a couple of years in Branford Hills. Uh, I had a couple of experience coaching the teams from Branford Hills, and I was fortunate enough to win five out of seven championships. Uh, one of our stars was on the mound in a playoff game, and for the first batter, all he did was throw balls. I'm looking, what the heck are you doing wrong, Chick? And I'm studying Chick, and before you know it, I spot it, he's stepping wrong. So I said, hey, Chick, you're stepping wrong. He looks at me and said, yeah. So again, he pitches, stepping wrong. So I go out to the mound and say, Chick, what are you doing? You know you're stepping wrong, why are you stepping wrong? Because I can't step right. <laughs> Mind you now, he's only nine years old. <laughs> I said, why can't you just, as you always did. He said, yeah, but I forgot my belt today. My pants fall off <laughs> So those are the little things you got to conquer. <laughs> I had another story not quite like that. My youngster, again nine years old, but he came up to our league with his heart set on pitching. And he was no bigger than that, the smallest kid on the team. And when he threw the ball, he could barely reach from the mound to three quarters of the way to home plate. So Richie came up to me and said, Mr. B, I want to pitch. I want to pitch. I said, Rich, no problem. You can pitch as long as you get the ball over the plate. So keep practicing. Needless to say, he practiced and practiced. So after about a month, he goes, I'm ready. So I got him in the game, and he pitched. And he barely reached the plate. But nobody could hit him. <laughs> because he didn't have the energy to get the ball over the plate. <laughs> the ball would go so far, and you'd stop. <laughs> those are the things here. He was motivated and he accomplished what he wanted to do. And those are the kinds of things I got satisfaction from. Uh, and the other thing, you know, I, all the sports I played, almost all of them. Golf, yeah, I gave an attempt at golf, and Max or Mac McQuiggan, uh, who I got on the board of. He's only board of it. For years, he and his wife got him active in town government. Well, he and I were teaching up at Warbury State Technical College, and at the end of the year, we, the last week, we're cleaning up and whatnot, and we, go out and play golf. Well, people didn't like playing with Mac and I. We all want to get before us, not after us, because I sliced to the left and he sliced to the right. And we spent all our time in the rough, looking for our balls, and that slows the game down. But it wasn't a total loss, because Mac and I, after every one of those events, went home with more balls than anybody else. <laughs> Again, this is great. It's a great pleasure. It was a surprise. Never expected it. I see all my friends and relatives here tonight, today and greatly appreciate it. The fact that you're here and this will be in my memory bank forever and ever. Thank you all.